800-450-7876. I mentioned Brother Jeremiah Camaro is on deck. And, and Brother Jeremiah, welcome back to WOL Radio. Uh, thanks, Brother Carl. Always good to, to be on your show, man. I appreciate you inviting me again. Oh, man, the people are asking for you. That's the, what it is. They they make demands, and I, I just answer the bell. I'll see if I can, I'll see if I can reach you, because I know you've been busy, especially with this, this latest movie that you're working on. Tell us about it. Well, Holy Hierarchy uh, is the name of it. It's, uh, the subtitle is The Religious Roots of Racism in America. And, uh, you know, we think about racism. We, 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 we tend not to think about religion at all, but religion is actually the crust. We think it was economics. You know, uh, slavery was economics, and racism was a defense, an excuse, an invention to justify uh, the treatment of black people in this country. Uh, but holy hierarchy, what it does is it explains how the belief in a biased supreme being in colonial Virginia led to notions of supreme human beings and how these notions morphed uh, their way into the legal system, ultimately creating racism and turning it uh, into a, a an institution. Mm, can you break that down for us? In order for racism, basically, is the belief of one group feeling superior to another group, uh, a sense of entitlement. Well, we have to ask ourselves, what gives you that sense in the first place? What gives you that entitlement in the first place? Well, you have to have something that backs it, something that gives, breathes life into these types of notions. And it was the belief that God created some to rule and some to serve. It was the belief that God created whites uh, with it as a, the divine intentions to rule over the inferior blacks who were designed or created uh, by this God uh, to serve whites, to serve humanity. And so once these beliefs uh, manifested, they became the precepts during colonial Virginia. Precepts teach people how to think about other groups and how to behave about other groups. And so these precepts were that, yeah, we are superior by, and we were made superior by this God who was projected as white all throughout colonial Virginia, even today. If you go in Walmart, you know, I always tell people Jesus is white because he's white in Walmart. It doesn't matter what the reality is. It's, what matters is the perception. And so whites had a perception that they were put in charge, that by birthright they were in charge, and the European way, the European model of doing things was the correct model, was the right model. And so they believed that you were inferior, and so they treated black people accordingly. And so, you know, when you see these, a lot of these white cops just freely shoot black men who are unarmed, you have to ask yourself, would they have done that to, 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 to you know, to their own, to, to freckle face Freddie or to blue-eyed Billy? I don't think so. They don't see themselves, uh, and I say they, I mean many whites, okay, don't actually see themselves uh, as being equal to you. When Thomas Jefferson said that all men are created equal, he meant all white men, specifically he meant all white men with property. And so these notions led to precepts, and these precepts worked their way into the legal system and ultimately codified racism. So blacks were made inferior by law. It was put into law that God was on the side of the slave master, that God was, uh, you know, f fulfilling his promise. Uh, to the world by this manifest destiny, by putting whites in charge of humanity. And this is what the film looks at. I tell people, if you don't really understand Virginia, uh, it'd be challenging to really fully uh, understand and appreciate racism in this country because Virginia was really the leader, right? We're, we're, you know, the part of town, D.C., you can call it District of Columbia. That's basically Virginia. And so in that area, and so this is where the laws emerge. You have several cases that were like stair steps that led to uh, um, various documents.
documents uh, being written to justify uh, the notions of racism. Many of these documents are still with us, and we see that uh, racism still exists. It's still alive and kicking. There's no telling when it, will, when it will end, but we just don't look at religion as being, you know, a part of that whole story. And having said that, you you when you you mean all religion, not just Christianity. You mean like Islam as well, and all the other minor religions. Well, I mean, you know, you don't have Islam without Christianity. You don't have Christianity without Judaism. You know, so those are the big three Judeo-Christian religions. You know, in order to have Islam, you have to believe in Jesus. Okay, so that was, you know, Islam came later. And then you had, you know, Christianity, then you had, you know, Judaism. But when you talk about this whole notion of, of racism, I'm basically talking about this country. So I'm, I'm focusing it on Christianity. Yeah, but isn't at some point that it's sort of a belief system? If you don't believe it, uh, it has no effect on you, right? Absolutely, because you cannot distinguish religion from superstition. You just can't. You know, you could put a Bible in the back of your car window and it can collect dust and, you you know, for safety. Do you know, you know how many accidents occur with the Bible? Do you know how many people get shot in church? Do you, I mean, there is – you have during, you know, uh, uh, prayerful gatherings in many parts of the world, you have mudslides. You have fires. Churches catch on fire. It's not a safe place. It's just like any other place. It follows, like everything else, universal laws. Universal laws could care less what you believe. They're always at work. They're always working whether you believe it or not. You know, the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, the law of compensation, and the law of action, the law of correspondence, et cetera. They're always working. It doesn't matter what you believe. And so it is a belief system because if you say that this God is the reason why you were able to get this job or why you were able to be in this good health, I can say, well, it was my rabbit's foot. <clears throat> you cannot prove it wasn't. But I, it's my belief that it was this rabbit's foot. All it is is basically belief. And, you know, uh, in 325, it was revised, I think, in, what was it, 380, I think 380, 381, somewhere around there. But in 325, the Nicene Creed was written, and it's still the standard of belief today. So how can you have, you know, something that was written in 325 when ignorance and superstition and sexism and 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 was the, was the height of the times during the, the the Christian era. Now you're gonna get many blacks. Well, no, they, you know, Christianity is a black religion. Listen, listen, listen. Stop that, okay? Just stop it, because it's like someone who has been in a in a in a wreck so badly that you can no longer identify the body. So any resemblance. Or you know, uh, uh, notions. Of course, we we understand uh, about the uh, the ancient Egyptian story of the floods and the resurrection and and the beginning of of, of time of of the earth and how they created that and formed that into Christianity. We know that you know there's really nothing that the European has invented. It was all you know cold from many other cultures around the world, but. To, to 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 stop there and say, well, no, Jesus is, was black and Moses and all this thing. Just stop it, okay? Because there's there's no proof of that. There was no people even called Hebrew prior to 1300, which was supposed to have been the period of the Great Exodus. So you got something that was written in 325, you know, and when you read the first couple of lines of the Nicene Creed is the same thing as you're going to find in many of the churches today. Even churches that you think are, 
uh, you know. Uh, so, hang, hang on a second, Jeremiah. We've got to take a short break here. I'll let you finish your thought on the other side. Folks, you too can join us. Speak to Jeremiah Kamara. Reach out to us, 800-450-7876. Get you in. Your calls are next on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. WOL, where information is power. Nelson in the afternoon on 1450 and 95.9 WOL. And thanks for staying with us, folks. Our, our guest is movie maker and also author. His name is Jeremiah Kamara. Look him up and see some of the stuff he's done. He's working on a new project uh, right now. It's called Holy Hierarchy, the Religious Roots of Racism in America. So, Jeremiah, I'm going to let you finish your thought. Yeah, we were talking about the Nicene Creed in 325. Now, it's been a while since I read it, but basically what it talks about is the fact that they believe in one Lord, Jesus. He's the only son of God for us men in our salvation. He came down from heaven. So you see the sexism that's in that right there. That's not African. Uh, and it says that he was crucified and he rose on the third day. He ascended to heaven and he sits at the right hand of the father. He'll come again and he'll judge the living and the dead. And we, you know, we, we acknowledge baptism uh, for the forgiveness of sins, et cetera, and et cetera, et cetera. When you go to say, and I'm just using this for an example, because this would be considered a progressive church, which is really no such thing. But you got Creflo Dollars Church down here in Atlanta, World Changers, uh, and their statement of belief says that the same thing as the Nicene Creed did in 325. They said that Jesus is the son of God and that he was crucified, he died, and he was buried. And he rose on the third day, he rose from the dead, and he later he ascended to heaven, and he's on the right-hand side of God. And when the rapture comes, you know, the dead will rise first, and then those who are alive will remain. You know, those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior will be caught up to meet him in the air. This is nothing short of science fiction. It's just science fiction. You know, the hardest Thing for believers to accept is that practically all of their beliefs are based upon European, medieval, dark age ideology that evolved out of fear, panic, uh, hysteria, sexism, superstition, and extreme ignorance. Nearly every aspect of one's faith can be traced to one of the various council meetings that took place during the Christian era it can be traced to the council meetings, the crusades, the inquisitions, the Protestant reformation, the witch hunts, the plagues of Europe from 100 to 1500. So when you get people to, you know, believe in a God with the son born of a virgin uh, who resurrected, etc., these are just all medieval myths that have been called from many other cultures which preceded Christianity. The Bible is a retelling of pre-existing myths and legends. And just like you have men, men, white men, who created a constitution with all the ideas that define a nation, so did men create a Bible and a belief system with all the ideas within it that define and govern those who believe in it. And having said that, uh, uh, Jeremiah, why is it so it seems like disproportionately blacks, African-Americans, e even blacks on the continent and, and the brothers in the Caribbean, sister brothers and sisters in the Caribbean, it seem to be uh, uh, seem to so much in, into this religious thing. What's going on there? Why? Why is it seems that way? Well, th there's a, the universal law that I said. It's called cause and effect. You know, I was in Grenada this uh, this summer, right, in the beautiful country of Grenada. And I was riding, you know, on the bus. Just a very beautiful democratic system. The buses is the most beautiful thing I've seen in humanity. Just the way you get on, the way they let people on, the way they pick you up. And every time I got on there, you know, they were playing religious music. They were playing, uh, there was this one song that kind of made me laugh a little bit. It was called um, Jesus Dropped the Charges. It was a song, I think it came out in the 80s, but Jesus Dropped the Charges. And I just had to laugh a little bit about that. But there's a, a universal law called cause and effect. And amongst many other things, cause and effect says that nothing happens by chance. So the fact that black people engage 
and love and believe or claim they love Jesus so much has to do with events that happened a long time ago. Okay, so despite the fact that there's been many other saviors that preceded Jesus who had basically the same story, like uh, you, you had Juno and Mars, Sybil and Addis, Nice and Ra, Aset and Heru, etc. Why did Jesus stick? You know, why is Jesus so known and loved today? Why not Mars or Addis or Ra or Heru? Why Jesus? The reason is because Jesus had something that the other saviors did not have. He had the advantage of his story being told at a time when the printing press was there to help his story get promoted. There's no accident that the Bible is the greatest selling book of all time. You know, I wonder where Asar, Mithras, Addis, uh, Zeus, um, Apollonius, or even Haru would be in history if they had the benefit of a printing press. So, in you know, it takes a perfect storm for the Bible to 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 last as long as it has and to be. I was just I just got back from Jacksonville, Florida yesterday, and uh, we were in a hotel. And sure enough, I opened the, the drawer. I thought they had stopped doing this. There was the Bible, placed by the Gideons, you know, right there in the drawer. And black people embrace this. I have a slave sermon. If you go to slave sermon episode 38, it's called Why Black People Really Love Jesus. Uh, it has it, uh, mainly to do with fear. You know, just like during the Christian era, they would fight you tooth and nail if you disagreed with them. Well, I was talking to a young lady. She was in her 20s. She was from Nigeria. And she was trying to preach to me, and I was trying to give her some information. She pretty much covered her ears. And what she should have done, what any intelligent person would do, would say, okay, you think like this. Tell me more. Why do you think like this? Here it is. I'm twice her age. But yet, there's nothing that I could tell her about Jesus. No, Jesus is real. She told me, one day you're going to see that Jesus is real. And I wanted to ask her, well, what? What is it doing for your country of Nigeria? What is it doing? Nigeria just erected, I think it's the second largest. It may be the largest because I know you have the one in um, Rio de Janeiro, statue of Jesus. But I think, you know, they just erected this Jesus, and he's white. This is Nigeria. So the fear is so strong. I mean, whenever they would, you you know, you would disagree when they were forcing this religion upon black people. There was a different treatment between those blacks who believed and those who didn't believe. There was a different treatment for those who accepted Christianity and those who just fully rejected. You still see that blacks are afraid to let go of this myth. And you want to say, well, you know, what What my thing is, my mom just passed in August, okay? And I refuse to let the preacher um, preach my mom's eulogy. That's my mother. And he was so upset, he tried to talk me out of it at first. And then he said, you know, I don't know, man. I tried to do I couldn't do you know, all this. And after I preached it, everybody laughed and her two closest friends my mom was 90 years old and her two closest friends said that they want me to do their eulogy you know wow and they well, what did you say in that can they, you share that share with, with some of the stuff you said i mean i mean basically you, you know I, I may i may put it on because put it on you know where people can can see it because we need to to know that we can do this ourselves. Basically, one of the things I told him, you know, in addition, of course, to my mother's life and the things she liked and the things she did and the funny stories. When you die, you know, Carl, everybody, you know, the first thing they're going to say, don't worry, you'll see him again. Listen, man, I saw my mama for 55 years. I have no desire to see my mother again. If I want to see my mother again, all I need to do is look in the mirror. 
I can look at her children, my brothers and sisters. Well, one sister, I had my older sister's past. I, I mean, I can look at my nieces and nephews, her grandchildren. That's called DNA. I had everyone in the church stand who was related to her. Half the church stood. She had like, you know, 15 or some grandchildren, 45 something great grandchildren. That's my mother right there because of that mitochondria, because of that DNA. Now, Carl, many of us who are listening to this program now, we left our mothers and moved to another city. I did nearly 25 years ago. I moved from Ohio to Cincinnati to Atlanta. Many of us have done that, seeking a better better life. So they say, well, you'll see them again. Okay, so if you see your loved one again, who's to say you won't leave again? You left the first time to better your life. So what are you going to do? Just sit there and look at her 24 hours? Is that the goal in your life? To look at your uncle who died? To look at your aunt? To be always around your grandmother? That is so unrealistic. Now, my mother was 90, okay? So if I died at 90, that would make her 125. What is she going to look like? The last time I saw her, she had just had a stroke. So is she going to be 25 now? Because if so, I wouldn't be born. No one thinks about these types of things. You know, it's all science fiction. So I told him about um, death. Tell you what, hold that thought right there because we're going to take a short break. I, I really want to hear what you said there, Hammond. That's a profound effect on the preacher and all the other people. It's, it's your mother's uh, going home service. Folks, you too can join this, this, uh, this conversation with our guest, Jeremiah Kamara, 800 450 7876, those are the numbers to get you in right here on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. WOL, where information is power. Close to home. Close to home. Listen, WOL, News Talk 1450 AM and 95.9 FM. And thanks for staying with us, folks. Our guest is Jeremiah Kamara. Number to call to speak to him, 800-450-7876. But, Jeremiah, I finish that story that you started to tell us before we left for that short break. And I asked the people, you know, I'm, you know, who drove here? Who flew here? Who caught the bus here? Everyone raised their hand. Okay? Because you got there. Nobody walked to the church. It was raining that day. We And I said, well, you were able to get here through fossil fuel. Fossil fuel are the remains of something, you know, of creatures that have died millions of years ago. So it is death that actually powers our world. Without death, you don't have life. Without life, you don't have death. They are partners. You know, when you leave this earth, from your physical encasement, how you were able to experience this three-dimensional world. We will miss that, but who you are is through your legacy, what you left behind, your children, your words, and we embrace that. It's not a sad occasion. You're right as a Christian when you said there'll be no more pain and no more suffering, because when your brain is gone, that's it. That's why I ask people, if you want to know what death feels like, what year were you born? If you were born in 1970, well, death feels like 1969. Where were you in 1959? Where were you in 1870 when we needed you? You weren't thought of. You weren't here. You weren't around. There was no you. That is the same with death. It's not a spooky event, but we've we 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 we've spooked it so much they were all so afraid now human beings have this awareness that our days are finite that this is that we you know that there will be a day when we will not be on this earth we are acutely aware of this and so to kind of reconcile that we make up stories about living forever. We get another chance. We don't really die. We get another chance. And we're going to see our loved ones. I mean, 
<laughs> no, you won't. That's it. That's why you embrace this life. You don't preoccupy your time on this earth by worrying about where you're going to go when you die. You live this life. Now, I don't mean any disrespect, Carl. I think I mentioned this on the last show. But listen, man, you know, the, her preacher was grossly, grossly obese. Okay, so what kind of discipline are you going to, can you impart to your constituents, to your parishioners? You haven't even, you you, you know, you're, you, you ask people to seek something higher than themselves. How can you seek anything before you even seek yourself? You got people going to church that are grossly obese and, and sit up there and talk about how much they love the Lord. That makes no sense at all. You love yourself first. That way you can do for others. In this life, Carl, you know, I, I've, I've owned the business for nearly 20 years. I don't want to say what it is, but it's a business where I employ people. I just don't want to mention that publicly. Those who know me know what it is. I've had about 27, 20, 26, 27 employees. All but three have been inmates. I'm, I'm sorry, felons. All I hire is felons. The guy who's working at, for me right now, we close at six. He's up there now. He spent seven years in prison. He's only 25. The guy who's going to work tomorrow is 30, and he spent about six years in prison. Now, if I was to die today, look at my legacy. Three of those guys have went on to get their own business, three of those felons. That's what you leave. You focus on the good of this life so that when you leave, it's you try to make it better than when it was before you arrived. You try to help those that are in your solar system. That's what life is about. If you want to do, uh, if you want to find meaning in life, do something meaningful. You want to find purpose in life, do something purposeful, and you'll find it. All right. We got a bunch of folks who want to talk to you already from across the country. 800 450 7876. Our first stop in Chicago. Cheryl's waiting for us on line one. Cheryl, you're on with Jeremiah. Hi. Good evening, Carl, and good evening, Brother Jeremiah. I first became acquainted with you uh, when I heard you on Carl's show um, not that long ago, and I immediately turned to my Amazon Prime after you mentioned your movie Contradiction. And I've watched it a number of times. I've also watched a number of related uh, videos. And I have been binging on Dr. John Henry Clark. So I just want you to know what you sparked in me and that it's gone farther and farther. And so I really thank you. And I'm looking forward to your new movie. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Thank you. That means a lot to me. All right. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, Cheryl. 800-450-7876. Uh, let's get a little closer. Fort Washington in Maryland. Baba G is joining us now on line two. Baba G, you're on with Jeremiah. Hey, Carl. How you doing? Uh, and I appreciate good. your guests. Uh, this is such a critical topic. And, and I think, to, to keep it short, because I know you're, you're, you're sticking for time. So how do we deal with the truth, Baba? Because when I look at the truth, when I studied this for a long time, I grew up because my parents were Christians, and their parents were Christians. It was given to us for a say, not to get into too deep of that. How do we do a, a study of religious uh, theology when, when, you, when, you, when, when someone can really study it, and it's really based on astrology? Absolutely. Because Absolutely. the two pieces of fish, the two pieces of fish. Absolutely. With which 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 was uh, Pisces, and now we move into the age of Aquarius, and and, and I wish and it hurts me though, and I'm, I'm reaching out for help here because, and that's why I call. Okay, right. Well, How let me let me navigate say this. that because when I talk to 
the Haitians, the Africans. I feel like I have to go back and teach the Africans. I mean, you all got this wrong. You all here in the Haitians, you all got this Christian, and the Nigerians got white Jesus all over. How do we teach you that that is a, a it's, 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 it's a plagiarism of, of something that really actually comes from them, man. and it really hurts me, and I don't know how to deal with it. Now, I'm going to finish it up real quick. Let's put the truth uh, that lives forever. Uh, let's live to live. You know, there, there was a family. I'm just on the DMV. Just to let you know, but I'm going to finish this up. We had a family here in the DMV. I'm not going to call no names, no ministers, or anything that. I want to disrespect anyone because I know how people are. I learned that from this show, how to be patient with that. But if you got a, a ministry, a family that, 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 as you pointed to, that preaches this gospel and then you die from uh, obesity, you know, it seems to me you're not really preaching what, 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 what needs to be true. And then when we look at it, how do you have the patience when you know that all of this is not really uh, real and it's, it's metaphoric, it's mystical, it's, it's not mystical, but it comes from the stars and what we did from thousands and thousands of years ago and they copyrighted, we know the story. Absolutely. And then, you, and, then, and then when you relate to these people and, and, and you try to talk to them, how do you have the patience? I, 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 I really, I don't want to have the patience. Yeah. I just want to tell you straight. Look, everything you believe is a lie comes from us. Everything right. you believe is nothing. There's no such thing as this Jesus and this and that, Muhammad and all this. These are mythological figures that was created out of the story that we that came from African civilization. And then the Africans need to know that themselves because they're buying into it. So I'm going to cut it right mm-hmm. here, Bob, because it, it bothers me. And, and I'm crying out because I want to have patience, but I don't have a lot of patience. We don't have a lot of time. So I just I want understand. to thank you for this conversation because this is the conversation that we need to have. We've got to break this. Right. And, 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 and I don't want to be divisive. I'm going to be patient to call. And when I listen to this show, I think I'm listening to a graduate class. I have to sit down here and write the notes down. I have to, I have to make my points clear. I can't call this show just talking out of my head. I want to make sure that we're talking about this because this is the thing that hurts me most. And I have to then love you through this and be patient because you, you're believing in something that, that really never existed. Even the Greek mythology, Aristotle, that's a question that they ever existed. So let's don't even get caught up in that. I can point you to Jordan uh, uh, Maxwell and, and um, Scientology. They'll tell you the same truth if you need a white verification. But I answer yeah. right. you know, Let's give him a chance to, because we're coming up on a break, okay. uh, Baba G. Yeah. Let's, let's give a Jeremiah a chance to respond to what okay. you just I said. Thank you for your call. I'm sorry to get so Alrighty. passionate. Yeah, well, we yeah. feel your pain, bro. Right. Yeah, Jeremiah? Thanks, thanks. Th- yeah, thanks for your, for your call. And I feel your pain. Listen, I'm not going to, uh, you know, sit up here and, and say that it's going to be easy. When you, you know, the brain is very malleable. And once it's been, you know, the gears of the brain has been shifted to a certain belief system, it's difficult and sometimes damn near impossible to, um, you know, to get people to, to, to think otherwise. The first thing I think that we got to deal with is that fear. I don't. Listen, when you're trying to... Tell you what, hold, hold that thought right there, Jeremiah. We got to take another break coming up real soon. We got to check the traffic and weather. I, I definitely want to hear what you've got to say for Baba G. 800-450-7876. You too can join this discussion with Jeremiah Kamara. Reach out to us. We'll take your calls next on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. WOL, where information is power. Allen Show is here daily, 4 to 7 p.m. on WOL, News Talk 1450 AM and 95.9 FM. And thank you for staying with us, folks. Before we get back to Jeremiah, let me just tell you some of the folks who are coming up in the next few weeks, actually. Uh, Dr. Karenga is going to join us after the uh, midterm elections. Also, Mark from Anaheim is going to be here. So I want to tell your friends to keep their dial set on FM 95.9 and AM 1450 WOL. Let's go back to Brother Jeremiah. Brother Jeremiah, help us out and help Baba G out. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I love his passion, you know, because I feel the same way. But like I said, it's not it's not going to be easy. But let me just say this. I think the way you approach this thing 
And the way that you try to get people to heal and to understand where you're coming from is to treat them like you would treat anyone else that's addicted to any other drug. Religion is a drug. It works the same way. It, it, it appeals to the dopamine in your brain. I mean, so what you have to do is, first of all, you have understanding. That's why when you see the film Contradiction, I didn't argue with these people. I let them have their say. And I made sure that I didn't go and create the film and talk to people with the spirit of condemnation. That's the first thing. Even though I know it's frustrating, it wears on our patients. We're in the age of information, and they're talking like they're still on a horse and buggy. They're back in the dark ages. Let's have patience, and let's teach them like we would uh, anyone else that has a disease. The first thing that you deal with is fear, because religion indoctrinates people with the idea that they're going to be punished for not worshiping or praising their God. They're also afraid of the criticism that they're going to get from their friends and their family. And, um, you know, questioning your faith has, 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 has broken up countless families. People are, uh, are basically just afraid not to go to church. Okay. Then we're going to go to pride. Okay. No one wants to admit that they're wrong or that they've been misinformed about something that they have been clinging to for so long. Pride prevents people from admitting that they've been tricked, that they've wasted time, energy, and money over the years. The amount, You know, you got people all day that complain about how broke they are. Well, I mean, you know, there's not one country, a, a city here in the United States, even Denver, Colorado, I mentioned Denver for a reason because it's like not close to, you know, any other major cities. I guess Salt Lake City would be one. But every city you, you go in, they're gentrifying it. Now, blacks are losing their houses for several reasons. Number one, not necessarily in this order, but their son gets in trouble. They put their house up to pay the lawyer, keep him out of jail. They lose their houses basically because they raised the taxes on them. So we can't afford to pay pay the taxes. Third, the people die early. Um, they die. When they die, their children uh, are not interested in, in maintaining the house, don't see the value of the house, and so they just basically sell it to get some money. Now, I say that because how is it that you've been in that house for 20 or 30 years and you don't have any money. Partly it's because you've given 10% of everything that has come to your door, everything that you earn, even your fixed income to the church. That is insane. That is the definition of insanity. You're expecting something different, but you keep doing the same thing. You're insane. Sit down, realize that the money that you worked hard for, that you earned, you're turning it around every Sunday and giving, and you have children, you have grandchildren, you have bills, you have dreams, and you give 10% away to your preacher. And you wonder why you never grow financially, because he keeps telling you, your blessing is going to come. Your tithing is really close to your covenant and all of this type of nonsense. So we deal with the we deal with that we deal with the pride to admit that people have wasted their time their their money on something that they know is fallacious and mythical and nonsensical. The third, separation anxiety. People get separation anxiety from being away from their church. Once they leave, church members calling them up. The pastor, what happened to you? Don't don't be out there in the world. Listen. When you decide to walk away from the church, keep this in mind. It is a two-inch drop. It's not a drop from a 15-story building. You don't have to plan your day. You don't have to prepare and get ready, make a grand announcement. You just stop going. And you're going to find you have more money, less anxiety, 
more time, which is the greatest commodity that you have, and just more freedom to live your life and to do what you want with your life, you know, on this earth while you occupy this life. That is the worst thing about racism is that it has the temerity, the audacity, the bodaciousness about it to affect my little time that I have on this earth. I'm here for a minute, and you have the nerve to put barriers in my way. That is the part that that is the worst part about racism. It infringes upon our greatest commodity, which is time. So, you know, it's like giving up cigarettes or giving up liquor. Now we go to the void. And I think I talked about these things on the last last time I was on your show. You got a God void. People want to believe in something. Well, you got to believe. Why? Believe in, listen, you ought to know how many organ systems are in your body. Somebody mentions the spleen, the kidney, the gallbladder. You're supposed to know how they function. You're supposed to know what you should put in your body, what you shouldn't, what your body will tolerate, what it won't. If you grow a new nose hair, you ought to give yourself a press conference. You should be checking yourself out all the time, uh, putting yourself first. Like they tell you on the plane, put your mask on first. When you put your mask on first, you if you don't, you can't help anyone else who's lacking, who's low in oxygen and needs your help. So why don't you, if you need to believe in something, believe in your health. Put that first. Tithe to your health. Go to better places to eat. Go to healthier food stores. Make healthier choices with that. Believe in that. Then you move on to betrayal. I think he had mentioned something about betrayal. Your uncle was a pastor. Your grandfather was a pastor. So it's in your family. So you feel as though, you you know, listen, they're not paying your bills. If they, If they put you down, deny you, ostracize you because you are using the faculties of your brain, then, hey, it is what it is. But I'm going to tell you, there's nothing like a brother or a sister of like mind. You know, the brother, as far as blood, uh, it's beautiful. But when you have someone of like mind that you met through the law of attraction, which states that that which is likened unto itself is attracted, is a beautiful thing. I look at my life now. It's pinch me. It is actually, I'm living a pinch me existence. My days, my time belongs to me. I've given this crap up, this Jesus crap, this whole religion thing when I was in my early 20s. I am a free black man. No debt. My children are doing, and I'm not bragging. I'm just saying, believing is not a biological requirement. A biological realm, you have to eat, you have to drink, you have to sleep, you know, get your rest. Those are, you have to have clothing and shelter. Those are biological requirements. Believing in a, in a Jesus is not a biological requirement. So you're not going to feel it in terms of your biology going down. And so once you get these things together, uh, you know, you understand where they're coming from, the fear, the pride, the separation, anxiety, the God void, and the betrayal, then you deal with them on the level as anybody else, like you're going to AA. They experience five things, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally, acceptance. That's what you want to get to, that we have been hoodwinked. If all of this worked, why are black people in the position that they're in? all over the world, and we are the most praising people on this planet. You know, we need to be having this discussion about religion and the the effect that it has on our time, on our intelligence, and on our money. That's what we need to be talking about. But every time we have a discussion, whether it's Black Agenda 2000 with Tavis Smiley, with this and that, 
We always got to bring religion into it. I'm praying. That's why we're praying for it. We're praying. Everybody on the panel is a minister, a preacher. You know, you're, 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 listen, you are your leader. No one can come into my house and tell me how to live my life. You are your leader, and you don't. We don't need a homogenized view of live, of life. We don't need a one size fit all approach. Your life is different than the next person's life, so don't tell me how to live it. If I want to vote this way or vote that way or not vote at all, respect that. But we don't do that. We have to vote a certain way, believe in this, believe in that, believe in Jesus. People, you tell someone you don't believe in Jesus, it's almost like you've committed a crime. And here it is, you know, 99%, 25 out of 28 or 24 to 27 employees that I've had have been felons. I could care less about what they have, what they've done. As long as, you know, certain, uh, there are certain, you know, things about that. Of course, I do care what they've done. But my main concern is where they want to go. That should be our life. Don't worry about what I believe. Worry about how I treat you. What is my relationship to you? And if you X me out of your program, X me out of your family, out of your club or whatever else, because I'm starting to think about this, I'm more interested in where the Bible came from than I am what's actually in it. I'm more aware of the fact that this book, I've been we've been going out this same book since I was five years old, and I can't sit up and really tell you three things that I've actually learned in the Bible. I mean, what are you learning? And it's hard to be honest. You know, especially to ourselves, we claim that honesty is the best policy, but I don't know. We will lie to ourselves over and over to defend our particular view, our standpoint. We'll cling to our beliefs even when we know it doesn't make sense or even when we know it's completely absurd. You know it's absurd to be born of a virgin. That is absurd. That's not how nature works. You know that no one walked on water. You don't have webbed feet like a duck. You can't walk on water. Just ask the, the preacher in Nigeria, I think it was, it might have been in South Africa, that wanted to show his face. He drowned. Right. Hold that thought right there, us. Jeremiah. Hold that thought right there. we got to take a short break. So we're closing on the top of the hour so some of our stations can identify themselves down the line. Stations like FM 95.9 and AM 1450. WOL, where information is power. Welcome to the Carl Nelson Show on Washington, D.C.'s 1450 WOL Radio and live around the world on WOLDCnews.com. My name is Daniel. It starts at 6 o'clock straight up on the East Coast. Our guest is a movie maker and also an author. He's got several books out there. His name is Jeremiah Kamari. You know, Google him and you find out what he's done. He's given us some information on his latest project. It's a, another movie. It's called Holy Hierarchy, The Religious Roots of Racism in America. And, and Jeremiah is kind of concerned about the psychological impact of blind belief. Why so many uh, churches in our community and, and our community is still doing bad? Jeremiah, I'm going to let you finish your thought. And we've got some bunch of other folks want to speak to you as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, hold hold the people. They, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll um, look forward to the callers. But if we're totally honest, we'll admit that we hear the same things over and over. You know, when, when we were just, you know, five, six or seven years old, we heard things that we're hearing now. Part of the problem, Carl, is that black people, we don't adjust. We don't adapt. Our we, our problem solving skills are skewed. Okay, we lack the ability to solve problems. We should have seen gentrification coming, you know, a long time ago. Everything that hits us, it, it, it blindsides us. The reason why you lack problem solving skills is because you say, well, we'll just put them in the hands of the Lord, Jesus will solve them. Let's pray about it. Bow your heads. I mean, that is crazy. 
When you do that, you're, uh, you establish a mindset that's now going to expect some godly intervention to come in and solve a, a, a situation that's going to take human work and human effort and human dollars and human sacrifice. But when you keep laying your burdens in the lap of this Jesus who has nothing to do with you, whose story has nothing to do with you, when you keep laying your lap in this Jesus, and then when a problem hits, you don't know how to solve it. All you do is pray about it. You want rain, you pray for that. You want what, uh, police to stop shooting, you pray for that. Everything you want to pray for, you want your schools like more ha- like a Morehouse and, and, and Morris Brown here in Atlanta. You want those schools to stay open. What do you do? You hold a prayer vigil. That's not, prayer's not problem solving. That's not how you solve problems. Okay, so that's that's our problem right there. Uh, we are not learning anything. You can't stay in one book uh, for your entire life. You've heard all those paths. It's time to move on. It's time to grow up. It's time to get your day back. Get your Sunday back. If you have a dream and you're off work, Sunday's a great time to work on that dream and work on that goal. Your financial commitment, Sunday is a great time to save your money. Instead of giving it to the preacher and going sitting up in church, not learning a thing. All right. 800-450-7876 in line three. Don's reaching out to us. He's uh, calling from D.C. Don, you're on with Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah. I'm glad. I I, I, I don't know how I got you looking at your books. I was on my tablet. And you remind me of the guy who was on a call show the other day. Uh, what's that? Race for the guy's last name is, is Black Carl. Yeah, that Jason Black. Show. Huh? Jason Jason Black. Yeah, yeah, a lot, yeah. Because Jason was saying, look, he was saying that, uh, okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a get this religion, uh, wh- whatever it is, I'll join it. He said, now what we gonna do? Now Morgan Freeman, it was a, a National Geographic. He went around all the world, see how people practice religion. You know, some use snakes, some will put uh. Uh, uh, needles in their hands and arms didn't bleed and didn't feel it, and so then they got to miracles. And two Spanish guys, two, or two guys, were cleaning windows way up in the building in New York, and and and, and the platform outside where they on uh, the rope broke and they fell all the way down, and both of them hit the ground, and one went to hospital. One had all kind of broken bones and everything. And he lived and started walking, but his brother died. So the guy, Morgan, asked him, he said, Don't, aren't you glad that you lived and, and your brother died? He said, no. Why did, and, and, and why did God save both of us? The same thing in South Carolina, nine people in the church. And this white guy come in, a, a boy come in uh, 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 and with a gun and shoot all of them. They they were in church. There was a business plus prayer service going on. All of them died. So then you say, wow, man, where was Jesus? Where was God? So right there you say, damn. Then you say, who who wrote the Bible? Find out who, who he was. You say, oh, man. Right. Now, I haven't read the right. Bible or the Koran. They got one guy. I think it's Walter Williams. He has two books. One say I'll give you, I think it's $5,000 if you prove that Jesus Christ walked this land. And another five, if you can say uh, uh, Elijah Muhammad uh, 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 walked this land. I haven't gotten the books, but my, my friend got them. And so I'm just going for those those two or three incidents, incidents that, wow, man, something ain't real. So you, I hardly never read, read the Bible. This one begot that one, that one begot that one. And then God, why God Nature, nature, it's about nature. Well, why they say it's a right, right. Don, put it in a God. question form so he can Not respond. A God. I just want you to comment on some of the things uh, you said. Leave your name and number. I'm gonna get all your books, and I think you got CDs, and I'm gonna purchase all of them. Yeah, thanks. All right, Jeremiah, I appreciate thanks, that. Don. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, when you read the Bible, Carl, <laughs> you know, I, I've got a, a cousin, and when she leaves her answer you know she has a voice 
message. And on there, she said, you know, at the end, you know, I'm not here, but call me back. But just remember, God is good all the time. Now, which one? Because in India, it's 300 million. Now, if you were to say, well, my God is right, do you see how absurd that sounds to think that yours, out of the millions of other gods <laughs> that exist and that are real to people that they worship, yours is the, is the right one. Your church is the one church that's preaching the gospel. You're Jehovah Witness, you're correct. You're Methodist, you're Pentecostal holiness is correct. That's arrogance. You know, if you look at the nature of this God, this God character in the Old Testament is the meanest, most diabolical, serial murderer that I've ever heard of in life. Every page is kill this person, smoke him, smite him, blood this, destroy this. It is the most glorious. It was. It's the most glorious set of books in 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 world history. You know, and so you want to say that this is your father. Now, normally as children, we take on the characteristics of our parents. They say that I'm, you know, dramatic. <laughs> you know, I've got a, a daughter. My oldest daughter is kind of dramatic. My wife is kind of reserved. My 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 son is a little reserved and conservative. Here you are, a good person. You're sweet. You cook for people. You share your bread. You loan money. You do for people. But yet you worship a God whose character is diabolical. How is that your nature? If we ever found that God in the Bible, we have a moral obligation to whip his behind. You compare him and the devil, there, there is no comparison. The devil in the Bible is just very political. I went over that the last uh, show. You know, look, the Bible is ideology. Okay, and you have your own set of ideas. How do you think the world got here? That's the one thing they always want. Well, how do we get here? So it's the, the sum of what your God represents and who your God is. It's all predicated upon how you got here. What about all the things that take place while you are here? Why do you make that your focus, your calling card? You know just as much as me. I know just as much as you. We both came out of our mother's womb the same way. There are some things that we may not ever know, but that's okay to say that I don't know rather than to invent and make up stories about it and put people in fear and hold people hostage. Religion is the greatest invention known to humans. You invented something that has you believing that you're going to see somebody 50 years after they have been dead. To believe that after you get put in the ground, worms take you, and you become a skeleton, that somebody named Jesus, who allows all this hell to happen on earth, is going to come down and rescue you and get you and put your flesh back up together. I mean, I'd respect it more if it was a science fiction movie made about it. All right. Hang on a second, Jeremiah. We've got to take another break here. I'll let you finish your thought on the other side. And also, K.O. is reaching out to us from the district. Folks, you can do the same. Reach out to us by calling 800-450-7876. We'll take your calls next on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. W.O.L., where information is power. 
Carl Nelson in the afternoon on 1450 and 95.9 WOL. I'd like to stay with us, folks. Our guest is Jeremiah Kamara. And again, his latest project you're going to hear about shortly is titled Holy Hierarchy, the Religious Roots of Racism in America. Uh, Jeremiah, I'll let you finish your thought and then we'll speak with Kale. <laughs> we left off, Carl. You know, we 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 talked about a lot of things, man. This, you yeah. know, I, it's just a mess that we're still in. We're, here it is, you know, according to the Roman calendar, 2018, and we still are in church with the same commitment and belief system. It is it is crazy, you know. All churches today irrespective of the denomination, are simply modifications and modernizations of European medieval dark age ideologies. You know, the players have changed, but the game is still the same. Fear God, believe and obey his word and live forever, or do not fear God, do not believe or obey his word and and suffer forever. You know, you can say that you are Baptist, your holiness, Pentecostal, you are Methodist, you're Jehovah's Witness, no matter what you say, you're Catholic. Okay? You are under the Catholic umbrella. Period. Now, your man, Martin Luther, who was really sexist and racist and all that kind of stuff, he, you know, set up a system that questioned papal authority. So thus all your Protestant religions were born. But you could not have the Protestant reformation unless you first had Catholicism. So you are a Roman Catholic. You can call yourself what you want, okay? But believe me, you're a Roman Catholic. And that is the worst thing on planet Earth that a black people can be is Catholic. When you call yourself Catholic and you're black, what you are saying is, I have no clue who I am. I have no clue about the history of my religion. I'm lost. I need help. All right. 800-450-7876. Raymond's calling us from Ohio. He's on line two. Raymond, you're on with Jeremiah. Yes, sir, Brother Carl, Brother Jeremiah. Nothing but that black truth, my brother. And, um, this cat, these Negroes call God, is the devil, okay? Just like you said. But most of these screechers, I'll call them screechers, all they do is scream and holler. They don't tell those dead thinking Negroes that this God character killed over 2 million people. That's according to that fake Bible that they read, while this fake cat called the devil only killed 10. Now, tell me who's the most evil. Now, here's the neat thing that I, my people need to understand about this, this fable called the Babel that Negroes call the Bible. Uh, Brother Carl, you just had a, a preacher on there yesterday lying to, to my people about Jesus uh, existed. But, but, but good brother Jeremiah, what has this white boy done to the minds of my people with all of these even mystic religions and, and, and Islam, brother, I'm going to get deep because I don't care no more. Islam is nothing but a pedophile religion just like Christianity and Judaism. Am I right, good brother? Absolutely. Let me say this here. You had all those uh, Catholic priests who molested those boys, thousands, children, Not one of them went to jail. Not one. The reason is, is because there was, um, uh, uh, what year was it? What year was it? I don't remember the year. But, you know, during the Christian era, uh, there were, um, I think it was 355. Priests were exempted from ever being tried in secular courts. Pope Gregory granted the right to be absolved of any acts of violence. Nothing's changed. If, listen, if it was a Jesus, what the hell has he done for you, for black folk? Nothing. Any, why would you worship a guy who can't stop bullets? 
Why would you worship a guy who can't stop crack or heroin, meth, whatever, coming into your community? You keep praying and you keep expecting a different result. And here we are dealing with the same issues. 50 years after Martin Luther King is gone, we're dealing with the same issues. The reason is because religion does not teach you and train you how to problem solve. They asked T.D. Jakes, what about the AIDS in the black community? He said, well, I I don't know. I mean, Paul never has mentioned anything about AIDS. You, you see what I mean? This is crazy. This is, this is stop. We need to grow up, okay? If it was Andy, which he didn't exist, because there have been several people with the same story. I've come up with a 19, 20 story. Mama named Mary, or derivative of the word Mary, died on the cross, called him light of the world, had 12 disciples, ascended to heaven, et cetera, et cetera, born of a virgin, et cetera, et cetera. It's an old motif. And we need to have the courage enough, no more, I'm out, and I'm going to live my life. See, the minute that you entertain religion or the Bible or Jesus, it implies that you lack something. So now you're living in the world of lack and need. Your mother would not have carried you for for the time that she did and go through the pain and childbirth. And you would not have developed into what you became if the universe did not already have what you needed to maintain yourself, to stay alive, to prosper, and to thrive. So when you come here, Religion is the art of convincing you that you have, that you're lacking something, that you're missing something. You are not missing anything. You're a beautiful person. When you were two years old, now you're running around talking about what a sinner you are and your sins and sinful. We're brought over here in, in chains like sardines. Many of us were already here. Probably most of us were already here in the first place. They take everything that belongs to you. They rape your children. They sell your children. And you're the sinner? You got to repent. No, 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 no. I don't think so. You know, black people, that's not even our nature. Go down to Alabama. Go to Mississippi. Come down here to Georgia. Hell, go to New York. Black people, come on in. Y'all want something to eat? Let me fix you something. Y'all hungry? Y'all close that door now. Quit going either. You come in or come out. You know how we do. We, that's not our nature. You kill our boys from the police. What do we do? We forgive the police. Half the mothers out here who lost a son, you know, the, the, the boy in Dallas that was shot and killed by the police thought that it was, the, that it was her house. The woman forgived her. Well, I'm a Christian and I'm a man. I mean, please. They wouldn't forgive you. It's not about forgiveness. It's about stopping the problem. It's not about exercising your Christianity. It's about solving the problem. Coming up with solutions. Changing the perceptions of who you are. We are an enigma. You go through our communities. I was in Jacksonville. Uh, yesterday, got back yesterday, I knew I was in the black community because the first thing you see, like everywhere, churches and liquor stores. That's all you see in the black community, churches and liquor stores. Why do you need so many churches? And what is it doing? How is it helping you financially? How is it helping you physically? 
Uh, Raymond, you have a follow-up question? I think Raymond's gone. It, well, I got a tweet question for you, though, Jeremiah. The, the person says, ask him how is he any better off against white supremacy than the religious folks he talks about? Who said I was? But I tell you what, I'm free. Who said I was? I can go out here and get killed by the police today. That's not the point. The point is I'm free. The point is I don't care what Jesus would do. I'm not under that anxiety. I'm not under that mental slavery. I work for myself. Two of my children own their own business. My wife owns her own business. Because we saved our 10%. We didn't give it to the preacher. One of the greatest things you can do with that 10% is to save it and give it to the tutor so they can teach your child math, so they can teach them chess, so they can teach them music, something that's going to stimulate their brains. But you give it to the preacher. No one said I was better off. All right, I got another tweet question for you. And I know we're coming up on a break. It says, please ask your guest what his response would be if his son, I think the name became, because it came out because probably a typo, if his son became a Muslim and his daughter became a Christian or vice versa, what would, what would your response be? <laughs> and, and I tell you what, hold on a second, Jeremiah, because we've got to take the break. I'll let you re- give you a response on the other side. Folks, you too can join our conversation with Jeremiah Kamara. Reach out to us. Our number is 800-450-7876. We'll take your calls next as the big show rolls on from FM 95.9 and AM 1450. W-O-L, where information is power. Close, close to, to home. home. Close to home. Listen. W-O-L, News Talk, 1450 AM and 95.9 FM. And thanks for staying with us, folks. Our guest is Jeremiah Kamara. And, and like I said, Google him and see some of the, his works he's done. He's got a lot of documentaries and videos out there and books as well. His latest venture is, is titled Holy Hierarchy, the Religious Roots of Racism in America. And before we left, I was, uh, uh, this tweet that I uh, got for you says, please ask your guest what his response would be if his son became a Muslim and his daughter became a Christian or vice versa. I mean, you know, I don't know. That that's it's let's just say this. It is so so very very improbable and unlikely that that would happen. They're just too knowledgeable for that. They understand the game. They understand the con. We never took them to church, but we never stopped their uncles or their grandmothers. For, take, for taking them to church. If you wanted to come and get my children and take them to church or take them to a mosque, we were, hey, come get them. They did many times. And they would sit up and tweet, text me, you know, while they were in church, all of them. And they they would say, Baba, you were right. This is crazy. The same techniques that you said they would use. This, I mean, listen, I've been to seminary in school. I get the game. I know what they are supposed to tell you. They're they're trained to continue to keep you familiar with with uh, to to preach those things that you are already familiar with. They're not accustomed or not trained to to go into new territory. You will lose your church. You saw what happened to Carlton Pearson. I think that's his name when he talked about how there's no hell. He lost his church. You have a, a, a brother that invited me to speak in January of 2015 in Denver, Colorado. He had been on the pulpit for 30 years, and he came to talk about the same kind of stuff that I'm speaking about now. He came back to church the next day with three people. Him and his wife were sleeping in the in the, in, in in the car for a couple of weeks until they found a place. He lost everything. They kicked him off the board because you can't go against this stuff. What you do in your little church on the corner, and once you take that oath, you're bound by it. Here you are, you're born, you're free, you're laughing, you're a baby, and then you're introduced to all this gore, sacrifice and blood and 
devil and hell and resurrection and virgin birth. I mean, why'd you do that to me? Why didn't you just let me be the free loving person that I was? Why did you introduce me to a book that's full of blood? Go kill all the women and children, kill all of the the young ones, kill all the livestock, but save the virgins. I mean, you know, you don't need that book to prosper. You don't need that book to thrive. In fact, if you spent your time learning about the things that you really want in life and perfecting your craft, you'd be a whole lot better off because you waste a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of money at that church. Right. Hold that thought right there. 800-450-7876. Dave's up next. He's calling from Silver Spring in Maryland. He's on line one. Dave, you're on with Jeremiah. Is Dave there? No, I'm not hearing Dave. He's not speaking. Uh, okay. I've got I've got a bunch of tweets for you. I'm, I'm going to put them all together then. Uh, the tweeters are asking, one, they say you don't believe in Jesus. They want to know, one, do you believe in God? Two, do you pray? And if so, who do you pray to? And three, the other, the other tweets, I'm putting them all together. It, do you say grace? Okay, no, to all of them. I don't believe, I don't say, do you, see, you never ask a person, do they believe in God? Because the presumption from that very question assumes that there is one. That's a presump- presumption that there is one. So I'll say, I don't believe in God's plural because there are many gods i've traveled the world there are many gods okay uh so no i don't subscribe to gods uh no i don't pray for my food i make sure that i look at the back of the ingredients and it, it has you know uh what looks to be more so in line with whole foods and i eat that you have people and this is no lie i was in dc uh because I, I i did part of the filming for this film in dc i was there in um when was that november and we went to this soul food restaurant against my wishes uh but one of the people that we were with wanted to go so we went there and it was in i think capitol heights i think it was capitol heights maryland okay and the line was long and i just told my friend who wanted to come there Look at the people in line. None of them look the picture of health. You're serving chitlins in there, fat back macaroni and cheese, all the stuff that will kill you. Why would I say grace over that? Why why are you saying grace over food that has you taking all these different pharmaceutical pills? I mean... You know, why don't you just eat right? Let that be your grace. Let your actions be your grace, not your rituals. And no, I do not. I do not pray. Why, I, my prayers in my actions. Pray to what? Pray for what? What is prayer? Prayer just lets everybody know that hey, you're part of our group. Basically, you believe in the same thing. When they said, "Let us pray," you're you're one of us. You're you're part of our team. You're 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 in our tribe. But we've been highly successful, and I, most of the people that I know, the law of attraction again, the people that have been brought in my life, we're all non-prayerful, and we're very uh, successful people. We live good lives. Prayer is not a necessity. We treat people right. We treat ourselves right. We live life. We love life. That's my prayer. All right. 800-450-7876. I think Dave is back again in Silver Spring. Dave, are you there now? Yeah, thank you for uh, taking my call. I don't know what happened. Listen, I just want to, I think that uh, science, if we study science, get into science more, and not as much into sports and all these other uh, types of uh, distractions. Because I think science is, is the true answer. Just like is we, 
we're not going to be here on this earth forever. We need to find another way to transport and leave this earth. D- Dave, do us a favor and put we in a question for a him so he can to respond. Transfer our minds and transfer into another type of vehicle because, like you say, we only here a minute. We're not here for thousands or millions of years, which, you know, eventually this earth is going to be gone. Oh, you, you know, it's not here. So let me let me ask the question, I, Dave. I thank you for your call, uh, uh, Jeremiah. Do you, do you believe what J- Dave said that this Earth is going to be gone, or are we going to be gone? Well, I mean, according to science, the sun has a time limit. I think we got about four billion years left, or something like that. So, listen, it, you know, if you were to take and I'm glad he brought that up because if you were to just like pinpoint one thing that you would call God, it would probably have to be time because no one can control it. Uh, No one can speed it up, slow it down. Time brings you in this world. Time brings you out. Time makes you old. Time changes all systems. All systems come in time. All systems go in time. There will be there will be a time that religion will be offensive, so much as racism. We will look back. Our our children will look on us one day and say, "You wait a minute, y'all went to church, believed in this Bible, and." A virgin birth and this is Jesus and you did this and you did it will be a time that all of that will will, will no longer exist it was you know gods bring in time a uh, time brings in gods and times will take gods out time is the one thing that we know will change things America will fall all nations fall it's just a matter of time. It's not your uh, prophecy that's going to bring it about. And when I say fall, I may I may maybe mean you know America will fall in the sense of of um, all of the um, I guess you would say the, the diabolical nature of America throughout history. Those ways will will fall how we how we treat people, how we judge people, this whole thing. You know, you've got a God who judges you. <clears throat> you can't create with judgment. I'm sure there are some musicians who are listening to me right now. If you try to play an instrument, you continue to judge yourself. Oh, I should be this. I should be as good as this. You're never going to get anywhere. Judgment destroys creativity. Don't judge yourself. Don't judge others. There will be a time when this will be the prevailing attitudes of this country and this world. All right. Hold that thought right there. We're going to take another break. 800-450-7876 to speak to Jeremiah. Your calls are next on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. WOL, where information is power. Nelson Show is here daily from 4 to 7 p.m. on WOL. News Talk 1450 AM and 95.9 FM. And thanks for staying with us, folks. Our guest is Jeremiah Kamara. And as I mentioned, his latest project is called Holy Hierarchy, the Religious Roots of Racism in America. Those of you who want his contact information, he's going to give that before he leaves. I know some people wanted to email you. They got questions that they don't want to ask on the air, so they're going to do that, Jeremiah. But let's go back to our callers. Uh, Larry's joining us. He's online, too, calling from Maryland. Larry, you're on with Jeremiah. Uh, thank you for taking my call, Carl. Uh, I wanted to ask him, um, does he believe in miracles and or has he ever experienced a miracle? Well, let me say this. Um, you can call it what you want, but throughout our day, millions of things happen throughout our day. Like today is what, October the 18th, I think it is, and it's approaching 7 p.m. Millions of things have happened. It is very unlikely that in these millions of things that have happened today and throughout your 
life, your thousands of days that you've lived, the thousands of hours, the millions of seconds, etc., that you lived, there's something bizarre, something mystical, something unexplainable. It's not going to happen. I had that happen this year, m- many times, because uh, we, 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 with my film, I actually uh, lost a portion of the film, and how it was that I was able to get it back was nothing short of what you would say or what many would claim as a miracle. And there was a, a guy who came in that I said was an angel. It tr- completely transformed my life. So there are things that happen that are inexplainable, but it has nothing to do with, with somebody named Jesus who come from a virgin. Uh, you know, it has nothing to do with that. It's just everyday life. There are laws of this universe that you cannot, uh, you can't get around. You can't escape them. Uh, well, when you say that, do you are you saying God? No, I'm not. I'm saying life. We, we, while, while I listen, okay. My life, I, I, if you take my age and you multiply that by the months, you'll get how many days old I am. You know, the months and the years, okay? In those days, there are things that are going to happen that are going to be, quote, unquote, miraculous. Mm -hmm. We all have stories to tell. All of us have stories to tell. Why would it be a a so-called God that I don't even subscribe to? Gods always use the plural term of the word because... Your God is just your God, or this person's God is just their God in their church on their corner, you know. But this is a world that we're in, and there are many yeah. gods. Okay, so what would you chalk it up to be? I mean, you said this guy I would, chalk would be it up an angel. Life. That's kind of like going towards the that's just that's side a, of God. angel is a, a, a angel is just a term that I use. It could be a messenger. Mm-hmm. It could be someone who came in. You know, I, I chalk it up to, to 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 the law of vibration, the law of energy, the law of action, the law of correspondence, mm-hmm. the law of attraction, the, the mm-hmm. law of of, of 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 relativity. You know, the law of polarity, the, the law of rhythm, the law of gender. There are universal laws that are happening right mm-hmm. now as we speak, yeah. whether we believe yeah. it. Or not? They have nothing. But those to are do more. Those are more religion. scientific laws. No, but, they're not scientific. Something, something. They're not scientific I was, now. I was, saying something, I was. I was saying something like a miracle would be something that would be. There's no other explanation. And I was saying a miracle in that in that context. No. Well, no, because I, there's cause and effect. Okay, and cause and effect states that nothing happens by chance, and it means that we have to take responsibility for everything that happens in our lives. Every action has an equal reaction or consequence. Right. Okay. You know. All right. Well, so, maybe. Well, maybe. Maybe like you said, you found the part of your film. Can you maybe elaborate on what happened that made you think that? It's a that, long that, story. It actually right. started Clara. with a guy who who worked worked for me who has a felony. It started with him not doing what he was supposed to do. And it all these actions that took place in between there culminated into me getting part of my film back. It was crazy how the dots connected, but they did. I was aware of that, but it all had to do with cause and effect. All right. Larry, we're going to let you go because we got to keep moving. got a bunch of folks Appreciate here want to talk to you. I right. always wait till the last minute to call, but I thank you, Larry. Let's keep moving. 800-450-7876. Go back to Chicago. James is joining us now. He's on line one. James, you're on with Jeremiah. Hey, Jeremiah. Hey, I just got, well, I got a comment and a question. The first comment is, uh, are you familiar with King Paper, what he wrote, how the mystery system contributed to Christianity, and he outlined and named each one of these different systems and where they got these concepts from. You, 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 you you talking, with, with Dr. King? Yeah, with Dr. King. And after I read that paper, like he wrote this as his dissertation, I read it. Right. You know, I finally was able to really come up with the concept of 
how he saw religion. And what what I came up with was basically that this is a language. That's all we're looking at. It's really a language that everybody could kind of communicate on a similar wave or thought. Because really, a religious experience or a spiritual experience is personal to me. Everybody got their own. But um, but this correlates to uh, just a language. After I read that paper, and I said, "Wow, man!" Because he named what he knew where each one of these was at. And then when you go back and read his writing, they really kind of expound. They don't really get into like one of fire and brand pre- preachers, but they get into using these as examples. That's one right question and comment. And the mm-hmm. second one is, it was a Native Indian tribe out there. My professor he hit me up to this out in the West Coast out there, and Carl maybe could help with this, but they didn't have no concept of sin. So these missionaries actually went and rewrote this Bible and put them as the villains who crucified Christ. And then they that's how they was able to convert them. But they couldn't convert them because they didn't have this concept of you a sinner and you already separated. They didn't have that. I'm, I'm, maybe somebody out there in the audience can help me because I can't remember who that tribe was, but... This happened like when they was trying to do, you know, convert a lot of these Indians over, but or Native Americans, not Indians, but uh, and they couldn't do it with this tribe because until they rewrote the Bible to say that this particular tribe was the ones who crucified this Christ, then they was able to convert them. Right. Well, let me say this. Uh, first of all, with the King Papers, I spent about four or five hours when the King Papers were able to be. Uh, viewed and observed here in Atlanta. This was, mm-hmm. oh my goodness, had to be 2003 or 2004. Yeah. And um, I named my first film. The first film I've ever, I ever did was called The Sunday Habit. And that's mm-hmm. on YouTube. And that was from what Dr. King described the church. Mm-hmm. I don't think Dr. King was a Christian. I think no, Martin Luther King use the church because that was all we had at the time. Exactly. Right. And, exactly. and I think, but if you look at, if you read my first book, Holy Lockdown, Does the Church Limit Black Progress? There are several quotations that I have about Dr. King's and his criticism toward the church. He saw it as okay. a habit, a Sunday habit. Uh, but hmm. he knew that the only place to really meet black people was to, you know, through religion and to, to, to have this um um this place of of gathering which was the church right. uh as far as the native tribes are concerned they did the same thing with the black tribes uh my first big order came from Colorado of a tribe native tribe in Colorado they ordered like about 150 books because they said they were going through the same thing the way that they convince you is to tell you that you are lacking that you are without, that you are a sinner, that you need to be redeemed. And it's really funny. I kind of agree with Dr. Anthony Penn of Rice State Mm -hmm. University, who, by the way, is in my film. He talked about how black people want to live a Christ-like existence. But one of the hallmarks of Christ is that he suffered his suffering. So mm-hmm. how can you say that, you know, you, you tell white people to stop doing this or stop doing that with to you when you find some redemptive qualities in the act of suffering itself? We love to suffer. Right. Everybody loves to say how they're from the hood. We love to say how this happened to us. Oh, I mean, we love suffering. We have the gift of longanimity, you know. Right. And they have trained us to believe that somehow we're lacking, somehow we don't have this, somehow we're not this, somehow we're not made this way, or somehow all of these are lies. When you look in the mirror, you're looking at a perfect being, and it's up to you to maintain that perfect aspect of yourself throughout your life. All right. Hey, thank you. All right. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you, James. 
800-450-7876. And these folks call in the last minute they want to speak to you. So let's try Fred in D.C. Fred on line three. Can you make it quick for us? Yeah, good afternoon, good afternoon to both of you. Uh, sir, you good said afternoon. that the only difference between you and those that subscribe to the Bible is that you are free. Okay, but yet being free is uh, subjective. So how is it that those like uh, like you also could, uh, those unli- unlike you, could also feel free? Well, they can, and I'm not, I'm, listen, I don't know what your life is like or any of the callers' life is like. I can only be subjected. I'm speaking of my own life. But right. what I'm saying is that I'm not bound, okay, by any belief system. And that, to me, is a sense of freedom, that I don't, my money is my money, my time is my time. And those are 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 subjective notions of what it means to be free for me that I'm sure uh, would would define uh, a sense of freedom for many people. Okay, I'm not okay. beholding. Oh. I'm not under oath. You know, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not this. I'm not beholding. I'm free. And okay, just oh. that alone, that I don't have that in my life. Gives my sense, gives me a sense of freedom, especially when it comes to my time and my energy and my money. Got All right, I tell you what, Fred, we got to cut it loose because we we just about out of time, and I want to give Jeremiah a chance to one uh, tell us when this movie's going to coming out, and two, how how can people reach you? Well, thanks. Uh, the movie it was supposed to have been out, <laughs> but of course I had some issues uh, with it. Uh, long story, but um, the movie uh, will be out hopefully the end of this year i'm in negotiations uh with various uh production companies uh and i hope that uh things go well if they don't then i'll go to plan b uh but the movie uh has been completed uh we're in the final stages of of wrapping it up i don't want to you know speak too much about it but uh, I will definitely uh, keep people posted. I'd like to do another show, if I may, to just let people know uh, where it is and how they can reach right. it. If you want to email and me, because we, we, we're at, just almost out of time, how can they reach you right now? You have an email, social media? Yeah, yeah. You can reach me at slave sermons, plural, slave sermons at gmail.com. Slave sermons at gmail.com. And also visit my website jeremiahkamara.com all right thanks jeremiah we'll talk later Thank folks you. are out of here Always. stay strong stay positive we'll see you tomorrow four o'clock right here on fm 95.9 and am 1450 wol where information is power in all social systems there must be a class to do the menial duties to perform the drudgery of life that is a class requiring but a low order of intellect and but little skill Fortunately for the South, she has found a race adapted to that purpose at her hand, a race inferior to her own, but eminently qualified in temper, in vigor, in docility, 